So today is my first vlog and building on the great work that Manette has done engaging with you through via the vlog is something we definitely want to continue for the future. Um, it's an absolute honour to be sitting here as NFU president representing 46,000 farmers across England and Wales. It really is an absolute privilege. Now I guess several of you don't really know much about me and our business. So it's a family farming partnership, a small family farm, 62 hectares. I farm in partnership with my wife Emily and my parents. Um, we've got a young family, Harry six and Pippa five. And yeah, I guess I'm the fourth generation to, to farm there. Alongside our home farm, we have about an 800, 800 hectare contract farming business growing a range of combinable crops. And we've also diversified our home farm, which just helps build resilience to deal with the huge volatility that we're seeing in the markets at the moment. Um, this first week has all been about office holder induction and myself, David and Rachel have been spending a lot of time together working out how we want to work and make, uh, make things happen for the future. I've also been lucky enough to have meetings with Secretary of State Steve Barclay, the Shadow Secretary Steve Reid, and the Chair of the EFRA Committee, Sir Robert Goodwill. Now the recurring theme throughout those meetings was about food production and how we deliver the infrastructure that really builds food production and food security for the future. It was refreshing speaking to Steve Barclay. He seemed to be very driven by the economics and particularly trying to drive resilient, thriving rural communities, which if we can help deliver that and put the policies in place is something that would really, you know, I think be a great foundation for us. Uh, but to make that food production element really work, we've obviously got the fairness in the supply chain reviews and they have to be more than just words. They need to try and rebalance the risks within the supply chain so that we are able to drive some profitability, which then enables reinvestment within our businesses for the future. We also talked about trade and we can't hide from the fact that those first trade deals have to a degree undermined parts of the industry. We are able to import products which would be illegal to produce here. And we want to see core standards implemented by all political parties ahead of the, or in their manifestos as we go into the election that would make it illegal to sell that product here so that it does give us a fair uh, and an equitable platform to, to produce on. And we're not being undercut by those um, substandard imports. But I'm also really excited about trade for the future because there are countries around the, the world that really value the traceability and provenance of British produce. Uh, and our ability to open those markets is something that we are working on with the agricultural attaches. But it also helps keep our domestic market honest if we have that competition within the supply chain. So that's an area which we will be focusing on moving forwards. But other areas that we need to think about to deliver uh, food production that works at a farm level, making sure that planning policy works. The government should be carrying out food impact assessments so they understand the consequences of all the policies they're putting in place. And that applies to the government agencies, Natural England and uh, the Environment Agency as well. So that if they decide to take a decision, what will the impact be on food production? And is that something that we can live with? Or is it something that really puts at risk our food security? Because just last week, the Prime Minister at our conference launched the, the or well, declared that there would be a food security index. And that's something that we, we've been asking for, lobbying for, for a long period of time. And it was great that right at the end of Manette's presidency, it was something that the Prime Minister delivered. But um, now how we monitor that and how we make sure we deliver against that, uh, and that will be a government ambition to at least maintain that food security at the level it is at the moment. We have also talked a lot about disease um, uh, eradication uh, through a lot of these meetings, particularly TB policy, because we're in an absolute crossroads at the moment with all political parties needing to put their, sort of stake their colours to the mast and tell us how they're going to continue the 2038 eradication strategy. We're expecting a consultation out of DEFRA imminently, um, where wildlife control will be a crucial element of that and we've also had the conversations with the Labour team about how we make sure that we continue the eradication policy which 25,000 members and rural supporters across the country have delivered to great effect and we must make sure that we continue all of the tools in the toolbox and that's the, they're the conversations that we're having uh, with the Labour team. We also just need to reflect on the impact that Blue Tongue has had on those, in those temporary control zones. It really has had some huge impact on members there and members right the way across the country should be thankful to those members for bearing the burden of responsibility to stop that disease spreading across the country. But we also know that Schmallenberg is hitting farmers as you go into what should be an absolute period of joy at lambing. But at the moment, there are some horrible sights that are being seen across the country. And we are going to have to continue working on the vaccination programs to see if they are viable alternatives. We have heard positive news this week that the Blue Tongue vaccination program may be just slightly further ahead than we thought, so maybe the tail end of this year. But look, that's probably enough from me at the, in my first vlog. All I can say is that I know that David, Rachel and myself 
are absolutely committed on delivering on behalf of 46,000 members. Working with the team here at Stanley, 1NFU will deliver on your behalf. Thank you very much for listening.